A massive steel frame just appeared at Massey, standing nearly as tall as Starship itself. SpaceX built it fast, positioned right next to the flame bucket with an unusual D-shaped profile. Ship 39 rolls in soon for testing, but here's what doesn't add up. This structure looks way too tall and complex for standard static fires. Why this height? It matches exactly where new refueling ports sit on S-39. Could SpaceX be building ground test infrastructure for ship-to-ship -ship fuel transfer? If so, how would two starships even fit on that platform? Let's start with what we know for certain. Ship 39 is almost ready. SpaceX just added fuel autogenous pressurization raceways to the stacking stand, hardware they don't install casually. These raceways handle the critical pressurization operations that Starship 53 demands, which tells us S-39's integration is moving fast. The timeline is tight. Cryogenic testing hits either this week or next, assuming weather cooperates. After cryoproof, S-39 returns to the production site for engine installation. Six Raptor 3 engines that operate at pressures and flow rates the previous generation never touched. Once those engines are mounted, the ship heads back to Massey for static fire testing. Likely wrapping up in early January. That's a aggressive schedule, and it explains why SpaceX is moving with such urgency on ground infrastructure. They already installed the SQDV-3 system at Massey months ago, signaling that heavier testing was coming. But this new structure? It changes the entire equation. The Chrome Kiwi team published detailed simulation images that reveal what SpaceX has been building. Credit where it's due. Their work gives the community visibility into developments that SpaceX rarely discusses publicly. And what those images show is striking. A vertical steel frame now stands beside the Starship test stand mounted directly on top of the existing support structure and positioned uncomfortably close to the flame bucket. The base consists of a dense grid of smaller steel members, clearly engineered to handle substantial loads. From the side, it forms a D-shaped profile. From the front, it looks more rectangular. At the bottom, the frame connects to two opposing legs of the test stand, likely providing lateral stability against vibration during engine firings. Above the main frame sits another unusual steel assembly, possibly a mounting point for pipes, interfaces, or mechanical systems that haven't been installed yet. The whole thing looks modular, like it's still under construction. So what exactly is SpaceX building here? The immediate comparison is obvious. This structure mirrors the BQD gantry at Pad B, just rotated 90 degrees. The BQD gantry is the mounting framework for all the hardware that manages fueling, pressurization, and critical interfaces for Super Heavy. It's the backbone that makes booster operations possible. If this new structure serves the same function for Starship, then SpaceX is essentially creating a full ground-side interface system for ship-level testing. That would mean testing the physical and fluid connections between the vehicle and the SQD system before fueling, during fueling, and after fuel transfer. For static fire testing, that's a massive upgrade. Raptor 3 engines introduce dramatically different operational pressures, flow rates, and thermal environments compared to Raptor 2. Testing these systems in a realistic, integrated manner isn't optional. It's essential. But here's where it gets interesting. This structure is nearly as tall as Starship itself. Why would a static fire test rig need that much height? Static fire testing typically requires connections at the base of the vehicle, not halfway up the ship. Unless SpaceX is planning to test something else entirely, Ship 39 features new refueling ports positioned higher up on the vehicle. These ports haven't appeared on previous prototypes, and they're not there by accident. The height of this new structure aligns almost perfectly with where those ports sit. That's not a coincidence. That's intentional design. According to at least one source, SpaceX could formally begin refueling system development around June next year. If that timeline holds, then building the ground test infrastructure now makes perfect sense. SpaceX would be able to continuously test and refine refueling concepts using V3 prototypes, starting with S-39, without waiting for on-orbit demonstrations. But that raises harder questions. If SpaceX intends to test ship-to-ship -ship docking and fuel transfer on the ground, how would that actually work? 
Would they position two Starship prototypes on the Massey platform simultaneously? How would they secure both vehicles? How would the new support frame interface with two ships at once? And perhaps most critically, is the current structure even robust enough to handle all of that? Right now, it doesn't look like it. The frame appears incomplete, almost skeletal. Additional reinforcement, bracing, or secondary structures will likely appear in the coming weeks. We might see oddly shaped components show up around Starbase that don't make sense until the full system takes shape. Here's my take. SpaceX is building this structure to serve multiple purposes over time, evolving as testing needs change. Initially, it'll support advanced static fire testing for Ship 39 and future V3 prototypes. The integrated SQD connections will allow SpaceX to validate fuel systems, pressurization, and engine performance under more flight representative conditions. That alone justifies the investment. But the real prize is what comes later. If SpaceX can prove ship-to-ship -ship fuel transfer on the ground, validating connection mechanisms, flow rates, and operational procedures, they dramatically reduce risk when they attempt the same operation in orbit. Ground testing lets them iterate quickly, fail safely, and refine systems without burning through orbital missions. That's classic SpaceX methodology. Test early, test hard, and test cheap before committing to flight. The timeline supports this interpretation. June launch window for refueling development gives SpaceX six months to build out the infrastructure, run preliminary tests, and identify problems. By the time orbital refueling missions begin, they'll have validated the fundamental systems dozens of times on the ground. While this structure dominates attention, the rest of Starbase hasn't slowed down. On December 13th, the aft section of Booster 19 rolled into the Mega Bay, marking the start of Raptor 3 engine integration on the next Super Heavy. The forward section follows soon, bringing hot staging hardware and upgraded grid fins that represent serious advances over B-18's design. B-19's stacking pace has been notably faster than B-18, a clear sign that SpaceX has streamlined production and integration processes. Those same efficiencies show up at the Gigabase site, where massive steel frame modules are forming a structure taller than the existing Megabay and capable of handling multiple vehicles simultaneously. At the current pace, Gigabay could be ready for stacking operations by mid-2026. Infrastructure growth extends beyond vehicle assembly. At the self-fueling complex, critical motors for the air separation units were installed between December 11th and 13th pushing Starbase closer to on-site production of liquid oxygen and nitrogen. When complete, Starbase will produce its own propellants, eliminating external dependencies and enabling higher launch cadences. Even without active flight tests, Starbase is advancing across every dimension, boosters, facilities, and propellant systems all moving forward in parallel. This is how SpaceX scales, continuous parallel development with each system feeding progress into the others. Now let's shift to orbit, where SpaceX just flagged a serious incident. On December 9th, China launched a Kinetic One rocket from Juquan, deploying nine spacecraft. Shortly after, SpaceX reported that one of those objects passed within roughly 200 meters of Starlink satellite 6079 at about 560 kilometers altitude. Michael Nichols, Starlink's VP of Engineering, publicly stated that no prior coordination or deconfliction occurred calling the lack of data sharing one of the most serious risks in modern space operations. CAS Space, which operates the Kinetic One rocket, acknowledged the incident and said it's investigating. They noted the event occurred nearly 48 hours after payload separation and called for greater cooperation between operators. Here's the reality. Space traffic management is complex and responsibility isn't always clear. SpaceX operates nearly 9,300 Starlink satellites that perform autonomous avoidance maneuvers. About 145,000 such actions in the first half of 2025 alone. But not all spacecraft have comparable capabilities and unshared trajectory data increases the risk of sudden close approaches. This isn't hypothetical. A single collision could generate debris that triggers cascading impacts, the Kessler syndrome scenario. As launch rates accelerate worldwide, incidents like this underscore a growing problem. Without stronger coordination and transparency, orbital safety becomes increasingly difficult to maintain. 
Finally, a milestone that highlights SpaceX's operational dominance. On December 14, SpaceX recovered its 555th Falcon 9 booster, Booster 1093, which launched 27 Starlink satellites from California and landed on the drone ship OCISLY in the Pacific. This marked B-1093's ninth successful flight and recovery, demonstrating the maturity of SpaceX's reusability program. This was SpaceX's 162nd Falcon 9 launch of 2025 and its 582nd launch overall. While Starship development captures headlines, Falcon 9 remains the backbone of SpaceX's launch dominance, proving that reusability at scale isn't just possible, it's routine. So where does all of this lead? That tall steel structure at Massey isn't just another test stand upgrade, it's a signal. SpaceX is preparing for the next phase of Starship development, and it's happening faster than most people expected. Ship 39 tests in January. The refueling infrastructure could go live by June. Gigabay stacks vehicles by mid-2026. Starbase produces its own propellants on-site. These aren't isolated developments. They're pieces of a coordinated push toward operational Starship flights at scale. But here's what matters most. SpaceX is building the capability to test ship-to-ship -ship refueling on the ground before attempting it in orbit. That's the smart play. Validate the systems where failure costs time and hardware, not entire missions. Prove the connections work, the flow rates are stable, and the procedures are solid. Then take it to space with confidence. The Booster 18 explosion delayed things but it didn't stop momentum. SpaceX adapted, accelerated infrastructure development, and positioned themselves to move even faster once testing resumes. That's the difference between a company that reacts to setbacks and one that uses them to get stronger. We're watching SpaceX build the infrastructure for a multi-planetary civilization, one test stand at a time. And judging by what's rising at Massey right now, the next chapter starts in January. If you found this breakdown valuable, Hit that like button and share this video with anyone following Starship development. Drop a comment below with your take on what SpaceX is really building at Massey. And subscribe to Space Update 24 hours so you don't miss the next major development. Because at this pace, it's coming soon.